This video demonstrates some of the superficial distal outflow uh, veins and plexus that are present uh, with conventional outflow and surgical augmentation with the eye stent. Here we're looking at the left eye of a patient with pseudoexfoliation glaucoma. We're looking at the infranasal quadrant here identifying uh, what appear to be a couple of um, uh, larger caliber aqueous veins present uh, from the inferior limbus. We glance over as well nasally here and then supranasally here showing uh, again, uh, some of the larger caliber aqueous veins. These are episcleral veins uh, that are larger caliber, 50 to 100 microns in size here. And this particular one, you can see courses more of a tangential uh, pattern and then heads back more uh, posteriorly radially. And with a bit of pressure on the uh, cornea, increasing the pressure in the uh, anterior chamber, we actually see some blanching of that, uh, of that tangential aqueous vein present uh, emerging from the limbal area in the supranasal quadrant here. You can see the laminar flow that uh, exists with the pressurization on the, uh, in the, in the cornea in the anterior chamber. And this actually is uh, seen as the, uh, this aqueous vein merges into a, another uh, epistleral vein here and uh, passes radially posteriorly. Looking around temporally, you see that the distribution of these veins are less so present in the uh, temporal quadrant. Uh, there are some infrotemporal but the preponderance of these vessels are really more so in the uh, nasal quadrant with infranasal and supranasal. Here we're seeing again uh, one of the vessels in the infranasal quadrant here present. Um, again, also looking uh, in more detail at these vessels present uh, in the nasal quadrant. You can see there's a large distribution of these vessels. Some of them are small caliber, some of them are large caliber, some of them are epistleral, and some of them are conjunctival. And it'd be it's helpful to note uh, the vessels that are more uh, laminar in, in uh, appearance with uh, aqueous intermixed with the vessel, as well as some clear areas as we get closer to the limbus, indicating this is the presence of a, lar of a large aqueous vein coming off the canal directly. And you can really see these nice examples of these uh, veins here, in this case here, supranasal, coming off in a more tangential manner. We're gonna mark the uh, limbal area with ink where we feel these aqueous veins are uh, coming off the canal uh, this is based on the appearance and the positioning of these aqueous veins and the direction they head into the canal, again identifying those aqueous veins specifically, uh, differentiating them from some of the smaller vessels and the conjunctival vessels. We're going to inject some BSS in the anterior chamber here to uh, further increase the intraocular pressure here temporarily. What we're going to see actually you see some blanching of some of those conjunctival um, veins as well as the epistolar veins present as well. And the aqueous veins that, we, that we'll show here, again, these uh, larger caliber coming right off the canal here, again, are quite nicely shown, particularly in the supranasal area where we see this tangential vein here, um, pulse, actually pulsating here as it meets up with another epistolar vessel here. And this uh, pulsatile flow is uh, well recognized uh, now, I think, as a, as a mechanism of normal physiologic outflow as witnessed here um, with the injection of a little bit of BSS. And uh, really nice to see the distribution. A lot of stuff is happening in this video here, and you'll see there's certain areas that get picked up here uh, of uh, very obvious aqueous flow into these veins. And again, very nice example here of that laminar flow present on this vein emerging uh, from the limbus in this area, which has been marked already. So identification of these areas, I think, are, are important here as we attempt to target these uh, trabecular micro bypass stents uh, in the canal. The idea being here, we like to place these devices in the vicinity uh, of those uh, ostia as they come off of the canal to preferentially uh, drain aqueous through uh, to the distal outflow system. Again, here we're seeing a conge vessel actually in some underlying epistolar vessels also blanch um, after the injection of BSS. And so uh, targeting placement here, the idea being placing these devices directly near the proximity of these uh, aqueous vein or larger collector orifices here. Some injection of some uh, Vision Blue is performed here, um, basically noting that there's really not much uptake present in these uh, veins, and we'll see what happens after the placement of these um, micro stents. Uh, so our eye stents are being placed here. You'll see we're placing three eye stents in this example um, in the areas which were previously marked. You'll see this uh, eye stent goes in. Some immediate blood reflux is present, um, which is, I think, a positive sign indicating we're likely in that area uh, of the uh, aqueous vein uh, ostium. And um, you can see we place it right under that mark indicating where, where, where we want it to be here with some blood reflux. 
Uh, our second eye stent is now being placed uh, along the uh, more on the slightly nasal to supranasal area, which was identified previously again by the uh, by the marking on the limbal area. And this de this device goes in, and you'll see it's placed nicely within the canal. Although in this case, there's no immediate um, reflux of blood uh, present. We'll put our third um, micro stent here again. This is in the supranasal quadrant, where we saw that uh, fairly significant tangential. Um, aqueous vein emerging from the limbal area and here we see we see some blood reflux emerging uh, from that placement here with the third device placed. At this point we'll uh, irrigate some of that uh, blood and this glass out of the anterior chamber lowering the pressure and we immediately see blood reflux emerging from three of the stents placed here uh, very nicely here uh, where they've been placed indicating we have a high chance that we've uh, we're put, in a, put in an area where there's a patent uh, aqueous uh, vein. We will then proceed um, with uh, the phaco emulsification. After the uh, phaco and eye well has been performed, we'll see pressure is lowered in the eye and we evacuate the um, viscoelastic with irrigating uh, using the eye handpiece. And this is a nice example here. We'll see some blanching, significant blanching actually uh, in the area nasally, infranasally here in this case, uh, in the vicinity again of, this, um, of the eye stent, which is placed where that uh, ink mark is. And you'll see some of the conjunctival vessels as well as the underlying underlying episcular vessels blanch as well uh, with the irrigation. We're alternating this with uh, with uh, holding the irrigation to allow the pressure to drop in the eye and blood to reflex back into the veins. Uh, and we can actually see some of the blanching and uh, laminar flow present uh, again in the same area where, where we described the aqueous vein present preoperatively. And you can see again um, the uh, blanching here with some pressure on the uh, cornea with uh, some changes in the IOP resulting in changes in the epistural venous pressure uh, here showing uh, where those uh, vessels are. Again, uh, the preferential targeted placement of these eye stents here will, uh, in this case, hopefully guide aqueous directly through the system here. You see the pressure is increased. You see significant blanching of all these aqueous, all these veins, aqueous veins, epistural veins, and conjunctival veins here. The idea behind the aqueous veins really is that there are only a few that emerge from the canal and likely only a couple are visible um, on biomicroscopic examination. And the idea here is to look for these veins uh, and place these devices in that area as these veins have high capacity, high flow rates. And these all these veins will connect to the uh, to the surround some of the surrounding epistolar veins as well. And that's what we're seeing in this example here. Uh, we inject some uh, tripan blue again here and we'll see that there's some uptake now in those in those aqueous and epistolar veins. Uh, showing that we've got um, excellent patency in the system within the system here, further adding proof that we've uh, now provided a direct bypass of aqueous into the distal outflow system, those uh, aqueous veins uh, and epistleral um, venous uh, plexus, superficial plexus here present uh, in this uh, video. Again, showing the uh, both the uh, infranasal, nasal, and supranasal quadrants all very nicely um, uh, showing the passage of aqueous. We've now lowered the, we've now uh, removed the irrigation aspirate hand piece and essentially uh, uh, resulted in the IOP in the eye being around 20 millimeters of mercury. And what we'll see here in this now somewhat physiologic state without any irrigation in the eye and BSS in the anterior chamber, we see uh, the pulsatile flow occurring um, amongst these epistural veins. And uh, we see again the similar distribution uh, of that flow that we identified uh, preoperatively in terms of location. With the um, with the aqueous veins that that emerged supranasally, there was an interesting vein you saw that uh, was coming off tangentially, heading heading more posteriorly with the, in a radial fashion as you see here, uh, showing uh, uh, the um, aqueous flow here, and this aqueous flow you see here is laminar in uh, in its presence within the vein, as well as pulsatile as you see it uh, occurring. Some uh, pressure on the globe here just helps to exaggerate the uh, the pressure changes within the vein to show. The laminar flow to show um, the uh, aqueous patches within the uh, the episcleral venous system.